it is my pleasure to is introduce Dr. Linda Forero Quintero. And Linda has been doing science all over the world. She obtained a bachelor in physics at the University of Bogota in Colombia, and then a master of engineering in biomedical physics in Monterrey, Mexico. After this, she moved to Germany to obtain her PhD in Kaiserslautern, where she was supported by a fellowship from the DFG, the German Research Foundation. During her PhD, she worked with Joachim Deitman and Holger Becker to understand the role of ketone body, strength, ketone body transport in the mouse brain cortex, both in normal brains and in epilepsy. Um, and she obtained her PhD, magna cum laude. Since 2017, she's been a postdoctoral fellow at Colorado State University, uh, co-mentored by Brian Mansky and Timothy Stasevich. Uh, today, she will tell you about beautiful lifestyle imaging work that she's done to study RNA polymerase uh, to phosphorylation at a single gene. And this work very recently got accepted in Nature Communications. So if you want to read it, you can already find it on BioArchive or find it in Nature Communications soon. Uh, with that, please go ahead, Linda. I'm really looking forward to hearing your work. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. I'm very excited to present my work today. So I will be presenting, okay, okay. So I will be talking about the visualization of the special temporal organization of endogenous RNA pool to phosphorylation at a single copy gene. So phosphorylation modifications to RNA pool to play key roles in regulating transcription. The regulatory dynamics of these modifications are difficult to capture in living cells with the traditional methods. For example, GFP tagging of the entire RNA pole 2 cannot distinguish uh, the initiated pole 2 uh, from the elongating pole 2 or actively searching forms. So our lab therefore uses FabLem technology to visualize a specific modifications to RNA pole 2 throughout the transcription cycle. In particular, we can simultaneously monitor the recruitment of the RNA pool 2 by looking uh, by um, spe specifically recognizing the CT detail of RNA pool 2 and phosphorylated, and phosphorylated residues um, at the transcription locus, as well as uh, phosphorylation at CER5 upon initiation um, and uh, phosphorylation of CER2 during active elongation. These allow us to separately detect and quantify different uh, steps of the RNA pool 2 transcription cycle. So, for example, FabLem has been used to see histone as circulation is linked to RNA pool 2 phosphorylation during transcription activation. This movie shows us the activation of the mouse mammary tumor virus, a altier terminal repair uh, tandem gene arrived by the glucocorticoid receptor upon addition of the hormone dexamethasone. So, what happens is that GR translocates into the nucleus. Um, to activate the gene array that is a uh, pre-mark here in red by histone acetylation. And soon after this histone acetylation uh, shows, we can see the RNA pool to survive phosphorylation accumulated at the gene array, indicating the initiation of transcription mach machinery. So using uh, FabLem, it was possible to estimate not only the transcription elongation rates at the tandem gene array, but also transcription initiation and promoter scale rates. Those FabLem uh, can be a powerful tool to dissect complex gene regulatory dynamics. But as I mentioned, this uh, work was done at a gene array, which is an artificial structure that's not commonly found in cell nucleus. So we therefore often wonder if single copy gene behaves the same. So uh, to address this question, we employ an established cell line developed by the group of Professor Bertrand, in which uh, they had a reporter gene that was controlled by an H1B promoter and contain, uh, contain an, a long rip insert of the MS2. So what happens is that when the uh, MS2 insert gets transcribed by the RNA polymerase, the MS2 loops are produced. And uh, these are uh, coated by the MCT co MC2 coding protein uh, conjugated with a fluorescent tag GFP. So this system allows us to specifically know the uh, location of this reporter gene within the nucleus and also give us the elongation readout for this system. So what I did was to combine this uh, established cell line with this reporter gene and uh, use uh, 
fragmented antibody that specifically detects the CT detail of RNA pool 2 that allow me to know when the RNA pool 2 is recruited to the promoter, and another fragmented antibody that recognizes specifically the cell 5 phosphorylation of the CT detail of RNA pool 2 open initiation. So by combining these uh, two fab, uh, fab and the established cell line, I was able to look at different steps of the transcription cycle at a single copy gene. So first, um, I wanted to know if these uh, forms of RNA pool 2 uh, uh, were um, found in the reporter gene. So here, uh, to do this, I use chromatin immunoprecipitation assay. And uh, what I observed wa was that uh, there was a large concentration of the CTD and CER5 RNA pool 2 at the beginning of the gene, whereas the CER2 phosphorylation RNA pool 2 was accumulated towards the end of the gene. And this was um, consistent with what has been shown for other uh, mammalian genes. So, but how about live cells? So, um, here, there is a uh, uh, um, exemplary cell showing the dynamics of a cell exhibiting multiple cycles of transcription. This is a maximum projection for 13, 13 C stacks and three color movies showing the CTD in red, the CER5 RNA pool 2 in green, and the mRNA in red. So these are the raw images, and uh, this is the merge of the uh, three uh, colors. And below it, there is a band pass filter that allows us to see uh, the spots very, very nice. So um, here, um, in, in this particular cell, I was able to observe uh, multiple uh, cycles of transcription turning off in uh, one, a single movie. This movie was recorded uh, every minute for about 200 uh, minutes. And there were some uh, very interesting spots in which I saw all the spots disappearing, transcription turning off, and a CTD occurring first and soon after I observed in real time the initiation or phosphorylation of CER5 RNA pool 2. When I uh, process the image and quantify um, the signals, this is what I got. So these are the fluctuations, uh, intensity fluctuations for all the three channels. Um, and you can see that they are all nicely fluctuating over time. But there are uh, some particular points that I want you to look at in this particular image. So there were some uh, time points in which the mRNA synthesis went down to zero or uh, the transcription turned off. And this is also a can be observed here in these particular uh, crops for all the time points. So I was interested in looking at these particular time points. So I took a few times uh, time points before that minimum and uh, some time points after that minimum. And this is what I came up with. So this analysis confirmed that the signals were strongly correlated because all of them are showing a minima. But more interestingly, interestingly, from these uh, experiments, I was able to observe a clear temporal order in between the signals with both forms of RNA pool 2 coming before the mRNA uh, with about, about one minute before that. Um, but then, um, because of the sampling rate I was using here that was a minute, uh, I was unable to detect a significant um, time lag between the CER5 and CTD signal, which suggests that there is a fast uh, CER5 phosphorylation, uh, CER5 corpus correlation occurring below one minute. Okay. Uh, oh, so with these experiments, I was able to uh, show that there was a temporal organization of the CTD cycle. And then the next thing I wanted to look at was if the transcription was spatially organized as well. So to do that, what I did was to calculate the center of mass for all the uh, crops. And this is what I show here over time. Um, and then uh, from this, this is from the cell I just showed before. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it seems that the cell 5 is consistently closer to mRNA than CTD. Then by calculating the Euclidean distance between the CER5 and mRNA uh, in cyan here and uh, uh, CTD and mRNA in purple, uh, we confirmed that this is the same, is, this is the case. Uh, so when I did this analysis for all the cells I imaged, I was able to show and uh, quantify that there is a distance, uh, a median distance of 181 nanometers between the mRNA and CTD RNA pool 2 compared to 148 nanometers between cell Five and mRNA, and cell five RNA equal to an mRNA. So transcription is spatially organized as well in a single GAPI gene. So then um, we collaborated with Dr. Monsky and uh, his graduate student Will, and we came up with a model that consists of 
five basic parameters that describe the recruitment of RNA pool two that is geometrically distributed in burst uh, with an average size beta and a burst frequency omega. So once the RNA pool two uh, gets to the promoter of the gene, it can escape uh, with a K escape and then uh, elongate and um, uh, process uh, RNA uh, to complete mRNA, or it can also abort transcription with a K app. So using this model, we were able to nicely fit our uh, autocorrelations and cross-correlations. So here in, code symbol, in, in color symbols, I show uh, the correlations I obtained for the fluctuation traces I just showed you previously. And in white, we observe um, the fits that we got with this model. So you can uh, observe that this model nicely um, capture our correlation data. So here, I want you to look at the correlations we observe between um, all the signals. We, you can see here by the peak that uh, shows at the zero lag time that all the signals were highly correlated. That was also shown in our previous analysis of the minima. And uh, these uh, analysis further confirm that the CER5 and CTD uh, are, a, uh, are steps that are occurring slightly before the mRNA for about a minute. And again, we weren't able to resolve with this uh, sampling rate for the uh, time lag between the CTD and uh, CER5 RNA pool 2. With this model, we were also able to feed the normalized distribution for the CTD and CER5 um, intensities. And also we were able to feed the mRNA count uh, using the mRNA signal. So uh, using this model, we were able to learn a lot from our system. So we came up with the following biophysical parameters. So we found that in a burst of uh, transcription, we have about 15 RNA pol uh, polymerases coming to, to this uh, cluster, and this occurs every 2.3 minutes. Um, and mRNA is, uh, takes about five minutes to complete elongation and processing. And in steady state, we can have up to 20, well, about 20 RNA pool 2 um, with nearly, with five near the promoter and 15 towards the end of the gene that can be either elongating or processing. So we wanted to test further our model. So for this, I use uh, some transcriptional inhibitors to uh, disrupt the, our system. So I started to inhibit the earlier step of transcription using triptolide. That's an inhibitor that inhibits DNA opening and initiation. And you can see here from the movie and the crops in the right that very quickly after I add the inhibitor, all the signals disappear. So as I uh, was mentioning, um, by inhibiting with uh, triptolide, I am disrupting this uh, very early step, which uh, leads to the loss of the transcriptional cluster we believe is forming here at the beginning of the gene. And this uh, subsequently leads to the breakdown of RNA pool to uh, CTD cycle by decreasing the CTD and cell 5 RNA signals and the mRNA uh, synthesis. So I then uh, inhibit uh, a step uh, ahead. Uh, use uh, THC1 to inhibit initiation. And this experiment was quite uh, surprising because we overall we have an mRNA uh, synthesis decrease, but uh, this was, even though we have an overall on average uh, decrease of the CT and cell 5 signal, we have some uh, interesting cells that were showing fluctuations in the presence of the uh, inhibitor. So, well, what we think is happening here is that uh, that cluster that's forming around of the RNA pool to, uh, sorry, at the um, uh, beginning of the gene has a cell five that are quickly initiating and can still initiate transcription, even though there is a, an inhibitor there. So, and this is what's happening uh, for these uh, particular cases. So then we inhibit elongation by using flavopyridol, and we have um, an overall decrease of the mRNA synthesis, but uh, again, the CTD and the cell 5 signal keeps fluctuating, which um, we uh, think are uh, coming from that large pool of RNA pool to that forming, uh, that's forming around the uh, promoter region. Um, and then uh, the last part I want to talk about today is uh, the uh, experiments we performed to quantify this uh, or resolve for this time lag between the CTD and CER5 RNA pool 2. 
So for doing this, I performed very fast imaging experiments. So I was imaging uh, 150 milliseconds per frame. Um, and here is an exemplary cell showing the transcription site and the control position. Here uh, in the right, you see the uh, CTD, CER5, and MS2 or mRNA signals in the, in the right and their intensity fluctuations. So it's mostly noisy for the control position. And then uh, we can see some fluctuations for the CTD and CER5. Um, Although these uh, higher temporal re, uh, resolution experiments are too much short to capture the full auto and cross correlation curves, they were sufficient to resolve the short, tag, uh, short time lag dynamics for the uh, CER5 and CTD. So here in uh, yellow, I show the transcription side cross correlation, and in gray, the cross correlation at a control side. And here, using a rolling average, we can see that there is a time lag between the CTD and CER5 are equal to. So we resolve for that time delayed and we found that there is a the, this uh, cell 5 phosphorylation is occurring between uh, three and five and uh, six seconds so with this i come to the model that uh, the uh, describe our entire system um, so um, we have two states the transcription uh, on and off so this uh, um, on the states are extremely short. They are uh, about one minute. Um, and then when this uh, gene is on, we have RNA pol 2 re uh, recruited in bores of about 15 RNA pol 2 that come to the gene. This uh, phosphorylation of uh, uh, RNA pol 2 at the cell 5 occurs very quickly within uh, three to six seconds. And then uh, we can have uh, abortion of transcription even about one minute. After, soon after that, we have initiation in trains of polymer races and this uh, gene is mostly empty in the middle and then we have large concentration towards the end of the gene of RNA pol 2 processing and elongating uh, mRNA uh, that takes about five minutes and then in the off state um, that lasts uh, 2.3 minutes uh, we have nothing at the beginning and the end of the gene but the trends of polymerases that already initiated are the ones that are still sit synthesizing uh, mRNA here. So with this I hope I convinced you that we can actually visualize a uh, phosphorylation dynamics of RNA pool 2 during the transcription cycle at a single copy gene level that RNA pool 2 and mRNA are temporally and spatially organized uh, throughout the transcription cycle that fluorescent fluctuations of mRNA synthesis and endogenous RNA pool 2 are strongly correlated um, that RNA pool 2 is heterogeneously distributed along this being reported with a large concentration at the beginning and the end of the gene. And um, that that is uh, the, our perturbation experiments and model prediction support the notion of the RNA pool 2 transcriptional cluster forming near the beginning of the gene. Um, and then to finish, I will invite you to look at our prepping uh, posted in bioarchive and hopefully very soon you will be able to access this paper in Nature Communications as well. So with this, I would like to thank uh, my supervisors, Professor Tim Stasevich and Dr. Ben Monsky, uh, my collaborators, uh, Will, Matt, and Tetsua, and uh, Dr. Bertrand and Hiroshi Kimura, and our funding agencies. And thank you uh, for your attention. And I will be happy to take some questions if we have some time. Yes, we do. Uh, that was beautiful, Linda. Um, so thank you. I will start with a question from the q and I guess that was asked by Apurva Balabapuri. Um, and what he's saying is basically this, if you assume a speed of the RNA pool 2 of about 3 kb per minute, is what he's saying, what, do you, what does it mean that there's basically a one minute time delay between the SIR5 phosphorylation and the mRNA signal because he says the repeat array pre-3 prime LTR itself is about 3 kb Long? Okay, let me. I, what is I, mechanistic I, okay. okay, given the speed. Aha. Uh -huh. So, okay. Huh, that's a good question. So, well, using uh, so what the way we um calculated these time lags were using two uh, assays that was the minimum uh, analysis and the cross correlation assay and with both uh, analyses we were able to find that there was um, so that these uh, two events are occurring one about one minute before 
the mRNA synthesis. That's what uh, I'm trying to say uh, with these uh, experiments. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there's actually a question from uh, our, our next speaker from Moni Alaga. So actually, oh, okay. it's yes. not me. It's someone using the. It's someone from my lab using my link. I oh. guess. So it's not me, but uh, it's someone from the lab, I guess. <laughs> okay, somebody signed in with your link. That's okay. Uh, anyway, their question is: um, they're saying you see, like Edouard Bertrand, that Pol two make makes a convoy follow followed by arrest but it's still with the HIV promoter, if I'm not wrong, which is an LTR with internal promoter. Did you try with other promoters, mammalian and or in CD4 cells where HIV is expressed? I think, yeah, so this is a very strong promoter. So uh, this, is, this is correct. Um, I haven't tried that yet. So it's uh, something, uh, so we would like to, to see if it's possible to do. There are some tools out there, like uh, there was a paper in science in 2018 using, uh, it's called Cargo, in which they label endogenous um, genes. So it will be nice to test uh, this technology because that's right. So in this system was easier to see, uh, and I hope this technology will be applicable to that. But in order to see something, this, uh, the gene that you are looking at has to be highly expressed so that you are able to observe so the, the co-localization of these um, uh, fragmented antibodies with your gene of interest. So that, that is correct. So that's something we, we have to test. OK, and so that question was actually from Jeremy Dufour. <laughs> um, and then final question I'll ask is from I might mispronounce this, Neusa Reis Matias. Uh, he says, great talk, or they say great talk. Uh, why do you think pull 2 increases at the end of the gene? Does it slow down for termination? Thank you. Yeah, that was something that was a little bit striking. So when we, if you look at, if you remember from the one of the first slides I show, using our chromatin immunoprecipitation, I say we, we saw some, uh, uh, Cer5 also concentrated at the end of the gene, and we didn't understand uh, why. It's just, uh, and then so with the model, we were able to resolve for that. So our uh, model also takes into account our chromatin immunoprecipitation experiments. So, yes, it, it seems that um, at elongation and processing, uh, this uh, it slows down. So, like, it occurs like uh, after initiation, this uh, it goes through the gene very quickly, and then it seems to slow down towards the end of the gene uh, to elongate and process the mRNA. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we'll leave it at that. There's a couple more questions, but maybe some of these people can join us for the chat afterwards and ask you them. Um, thank you.